today we're going to talk about why brush strokes matter and which brush you choose matters too. Let's get started. Why do brush strokes matter? Well, they matter because they do a variety of things. They can show movement, and that's what's happening here as the girl is on this kind of swirly, swingy thing. They can also carve out a form, which is what's happening in this rose, and also describe depth. And I'm using different values to find the planes of that rose with as few strokes as possible. The other thing that a brush stroke can do is convey a certain amount of energy. This was a very static photograph of this dog, but by using brush strokes, I can make him look like he's more alive, as if he just turned to look at you. That's, I think that might be one of the reasons why we like to paint. And here is a cat where I'm trying to show a mood, but you can see very clearly what the brush strokes were. I never try to hide my brush strokes. I think, you know, if you're gonna take a photograph, take a photograph, but for me, if I'm gonna paint, then I wanna make it look like, and if I buy a painting, I wanna make it look like it was a painting. I want it to be a painting, that's the point. I want it to be what it authentically is. Here's a good description of showing how brush strokes can create rounded form, but you can see the brush strokes were moved around that tomato in order to make the form round. It wouldn't appear round if I just picked the right colors and the right shapes. The directionality of the brush strokes really matters too. I do like simplicity of form as much as possible, and I paint a lot of peonies. If you see me, you do that, you see me do that, and minimal brush strokes around the form as well. But there's a continuity there. You can kind of tell it's all done by the same hand. And why do brush strokes matter? Well, when you're doing uh, someone's face, for example, it really matters in terms of describing the planes of the face. What goes in, what comes out, what is toward the light, what is not toward the light. Brush strokes really matter and your choice of brush really matters. And now we'll see a super slow down event. So today I'm gonna show in really slow, super slow motion why a brush stroke matters. It really matters when you decide what form you're going to have, you know, what shape you're going to have, and you decide what value it's going to be, and then use a brush stroke to describe that form. If I was to use lots of tiny brush strokes to make this form instead of a fluid curve, it's going to have a different effect, and it's going to have a different energy on the piece of paper than you would expect. So as much as possible, what I try to do is, ahead of time, make sure of what my color is, make sure of what the shape is, and use as few brush strokes as possible as I can to accomplish the task. And that's what I'm showing here, very slowed down. It's important to load the brush quite a bit, which I've done. And I could have used perhaps a, a larger brush. Finding the brush the right size really matters, and also whether you like a flat brush, which I use most of the time, or a round brush. I don't know if that matters quite as much. What I like about a round brush is how fluid it is. A brush, a flat brush will give you more starts and stops. But when I'm creating forms, that's what I'm looking for, and I'll describe that in the next clip. So let's see, so even the small little moment there, you can watch as I turn the brush to describe the form. I think that's what it's called, describing the form. You kind of want to go in the direction the form is molded or made, or in the direction that, I don't know, it's more like a feeling, I guess. But let's talk about this for a second. I could use lots of little brush strokes, or I could use a few, and I'm using a few and I'm block, what's called blocking this in, blocking it in using the brush. And let's see what happens. Yeah, okay, so what also can happen is you're gonna find that things are not separated from each other. Right, right where the little dog is is where the form of the eyeglasses was. So it's important for continuity to not do each individual thing and then because you're not going to have a hole if you do each individual thing on its own, but do them whenever you see the moment is to do them. <laughs> that was maybe the worst description ever, but we'll go with that. And then finish, finish that dark dog with as few strokes as I possibly can. All right, so let's see. And again, any place where I see a dark, I'm going to put a mark. I'm putting in my darkest darks right now. That's what I do at the begin usually at the beginning of a painting. I paint from my darkest darks to my lightest lights or the other way around, from my lightest lights to my darkest darks. 
but in this case I went darkest darks to lightest lights. And again, I was going around the form of the dog's back part there in the way that the actual form is made, using those curves. All right, time for a new decision. There's so many decisions to make in painting. Oh my gosh, by the time you're five minutes in, you probably made 300 decisions. So I've moved on, I made a test dab. This is a lighter color than the darks I put in. I'm into mid-tones now, and I wanna make sure, and you can see the hesitancy in the brush. I'm not gonna make a mark till I'm sure of what I'm doing. I know there's a curve, and I wanna make sure that I describe that curve, curve accurately. There it goes, all one stroke. Yeah, and that matters. It matters when it comes to the painting as a whole. It matters when it comes to the energy that you bring, um, and also very similar to uh, handwriting as compared to, say, typing. You know, typing would be a uniform response, but your handwriting has your own personality in it, and your brush strokes will have your own personality too. All right, another test dab. I'm going even lighter now, lighter than what I did previously. Checking with the value finder so I can be sure and checking it through the value finder on the actual piece of paper. I know this gray has to go in and I know it's lighter. It's still mid-toned, but it's a lighter mid-tone than the brown. And here it is going in. Again, slu slu super slow motion. I don't know why I can't say that today. Later, I'm gonna come back to this spot and have it be reflective in terms of blue. I'm gonna lay a cerulean blue on top of it because it's gonna be reflecting the paper that the, uh, the uh, larger dog is on. And you can check that in a previous video. I'll see if I can link them. I'm not sure I'm savvy enough to do that. Let's pretend I am. <laughs> Maybe by the time I post this, I, I will be. So there's a straight line and is there gonna be a curve? I must have seen this very small change right there in the rim of the glass. So I need to put that in and another spot. Any place where I see something that looks like it might be gray or they're at that value, I'm gonna put in the form, I put in that shape. When I say form, I really mean shape. Now time for the dogs. Now I want to show as slowly as I can what happens in terms of describing the form here. I'm going to take the brush and probably go across the top of, yeah, across the top of the dog's head because that's a plane. And then down because the plane changes when it comes down the dog's nose. And I think there's going to be another, here's another plane, that side of the dog's nose. I need to describe that. It's almost like carving the form with your brush as if your brush was a, a tool or a chisel of some kind. And now there's another plane, which is down below into the dog's chest. And that's what I'm trying to show here. Whereas if I was just to color it in with the gray, it wouldn't have the same um, sense of mass that it has when I chip away at the different planes. And that's what I'm trying to do here. And this is just the right size brush and just the correct flat brush to do it with. But when it's super slowed down like this, you can see it happen when it's speeded up. And I usually do time lapse pictures of my paintings. You, you just can't see it happening. Even though in your brain, it's almost like your brain is working in slow motion like this. This is kind of how I see things as I'm painting. These are the decisions that I'm making as I'm painting. So that whole uh, side of the dog has to be gray. So the dog is dog is looking pretty good here. You can see my test tabs up on the upper right upper left hand corner, and I'm still putting in what are the, some of the mid tone shapes. And I think I said earlier, if you want to find this video, you can. It's probably a couple videos back, but I'll try to link it. So those are that's that describes some of why brush strokes matter at a very very slow speed. But now I want to show you what happens. And you've seen this before, but this is super speeded up what's coming up. And I just want you to see, it's a bigger piece of paper. It's a bigger brush. It's probably a number 20 brush. The one that I'm currently using is probably a 16. Yeah. So this is just how quickly the brush strokes go by, but they still matter a lot. I'm still thinking the same way that I was on the smaller painting 
about directionality. I'm thinking about how when to drop another color in. You can see it especially right there on the side of the house. There's three or four different colors going in there. And I'm being very careful because I'm not describing a round form. I'm looking at something very sharp and square and I use my brush that way. And here are just some brush strokes, you know, trees, branches. You can't get away from it. You want to practice brush strokes, practice your signature or, or tree branches. So remember to keep the whites of your paper white, your paints wet, mask for value, mix for color, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.